Watch Yo, this. what's up everyone? It's your boy. Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys my first place Tier Limit Danger deck profile. It's not at this tournament. I did not come in time to sweep this tournament. They're all lucky. If you wanna go around to show the lucky people, I'll just take this fast. You guys got lucky, yeah, I would have 2 0 you. I would have 3 0 you. All you guys in the back, you guys dodged a bullet. All of you guys back there, not even looking because they know the word got clapped up. You guys wouldn't even be playing right now. Uh, all of them, yeah, I mean, that's the X5 drop behind me club. So, they got lucky. <laughs> this was yesterday's tournament. It was really good. It went really, really well. And this is a whole different take on my on my tier limit deck. This is Brave tier limit, extreme danger. I removed all the splites with the top 8 YC's Brazil list. The splites are actually shit. And they were only there to charmer my opponent's splites. But the match against splites already free. So you don't need to make it better. So instead I added 13 dangers I think I'm playing. And the free dangers make it so it's like Dugaris Turbo. You guys will see what I mean as I show you guys the profile. Let's get straight into it. But before we do, the best play mat in the game right here. This is a beautiful Beyond the Pendulum play mat which you guys can get right now. Limited edition on TripleGaming.com. Get yours while it lasts. And the Splite play mats. Let's go. So... First things first, we're gonna uh, play a huge tier limit count. Uh, before we only played seven tier limits, and now we're playing nine. No tier limit, Rhino, none of that. Because you're playing Brave, you do not want to risk needing to normal summon that card, and it's not the best uh, send to the, uh, it's not the best mill. You need a tier limit for it to be good. There are scenarios where milling the Rhino is like insane, because you're gonna draw one of these, but typically you do these first, so it's just asking for too much. And uh, so that's the nine, and then as well as one snow and three enchantress. These are your main mills. We increase the count so it's like you have better uh, mills per se. So you have now 13 amazing ones. So these are the 13 grave effects that are mills. The ones that are kind of grave effects as well are these. So I kind of count it like 16 if you mill swap frog. Because by milling a swap frog from your deck for free, you have the capability now of making a splite elf to get insane value from the swap frog. And you still play gigantic splite to make sure you end on the toad. The end board of this deck is going to be a unbreakable top of logic infinity in the gate, which I'll get to that board later. But having the toad to stop stuff like mystic mine or whatever is very important to when you're making a board. Uh, now the engine that makes this deck so powerful, you might think, oh, Triff, we could bri a brick on these. You have like, look at these, like these, these are the only cards that are stick in your hand, right? They're like normal summons per se. The other ones are all extenders, but this is eight normal summons. So if you hard draw these eight with Draco back, it's nine cards that you can only play one of. This is what makes the deck absolutely insane. It's the huge danger count. So when you play a danger count, look at this. Maximum dangers. You're playing 13. And they're all, most of them are level, you have six level fours. So what card in the extra deck can you think of that if you were to open all these grave effects have insane value with all, the cards you're already drawing is Dugaris. When you're playing rank four turbo and you enter Dugaris plus Dweller every single game with Toad, with some form of topologic bomber, with snow and grave, Dweller, all this stuff, it's just game, you cannot lose. And that's without both side deck when you're searching Eradicator. So the, what these do is you can do Dugaris turbo and you make sure you never break. You send the grave effects that you have, trigger tier limit, tr uh, send enchanters, go into right. And it's absolutely absurd how easy it is to bring boards with and how much pressure it applies going first and second. Cards that must be negated and it just ensures you never break. And one Griffin Rider, which is just an extender. All these cards are so amazing to draw. Such great value together and despite you're playing three engines together, the synergy is just insane because the goal is to send to the grave from your hand or from your deck. So the dangers allow the tier limits which you're playing 12 of because of the field spells, three field spells as well. So because you're playing 12 tier limits, if you draw it, it's getting sent to the grave with dangers or faithful. And if it's in your deck, it gets sent now because you have 13 grave effects. So whether you're resolving tier limit effects or whether you aren't drawing the tier limits, they're resolving no matter what for free completely for free so the tier limits that resolve it just free value this helps you break boards like nothing and because of toad you have unbreakable boards of double toad with elf with dweller with snow with the top logic bomber and what people don't understand about top logic bomber and for those that don't understand the combo is when you set up an elf and a mascarena which is a very very easy board to do i mean unbelievably easy you trigger a spite elf targeting your tier limit merely Okay, this is for the people that don't know this combo. It's an infinite negate combo. Typically backed up with a toad. You do the toad negates first and then do this. Effect, effect, chain, bring a top logic bomber dragon. Top logic bomber dragon will then resolve with the mirror lead. Chain link one mirror lead, chain link, uh, sorry, chain link one top logic, chain link two mirror lead. 
it'll trigger to blow up the field, and then merely will trigger to special Kikalos. Kikalos will then get on the field underneath the zone of Bomber Dragon. Triggering Kikalos chain link 2, Bomber chain link 1. You search Havnis. Trigger Kikalos, mill 5 more. You just mill 8. And you have Havnis in hand. So 1, Mascarina and Elf. Triggers merely, triggers Kikalos, triggers Havnis. Havnis summons something else with a Garura draw. And you trigger Top Logic 4 times for free. And your Snow has 11 mils with already 25 mils in your grave. You're going to start your turn with 3 cards in your deck because you hold decks in your grave. For milling 25 on your turn and 11 on the opponent's turn. It's too crazy. And it's un uh, infinite top logic bomber dragons to the point where if they summon 1 level 2 against Flight, you instantly bomber it. You don't even give them an opportunity to trigger a blue or a jet. It, you can resolve it as many times as you want. And if you look into the deck, we already went through a majority of the deck. It's all just extenders. So for the spells, you play these five with two right, one faithful, one Draco back. You always mill Enchantress, so you don't need three rights because you always mill Enchantress. And nine spells. You don't want to play too many. Desires is crazy, yes, I agree, it's a great card. But with you don't want to risk banishing a Snow or your Swap Rising Running Toads and your Draco back and faithful. So I don't play it. So you're going to play 9 spells, which is a small spell count. In the mirror match, you side out these 5, despite being crazy. You want Eradicator to be a dead card. So you side these 5 out in the mirror match. Absolutely, it's broken. Like, you play no other, it's just 40 cards of pure gas. You could duel pure sprite 100 times and defeat it 100 times. They could have any hand in the world. This deck cannot brick. It's actually impossible. It's all extenders. The idea of the deck is that no matter what hand you draw, you could shuffle your hand up and draw any combination of cards you want. 900% of the hands, 100 out of 100, will all, all six cards of your hand will be put to the board. And with dangers, I can't stress enough. You can have 40 dangers in your deck and you're beating Sprite 100% of the time. This is because the way you beat Sprite is by entering battle phase with two monsters, over 1,400 attack, which every single danger is, except for uh, Sukunoko and Jackalope, but the other 11 are. Now for the extra deck. The Link 2 counts, you play these. So 2 Elf, mandatory for any deck that plays totally awesome. And 1 Dark, we removed Iria, but I do side deck in Iria against Sprite specifically. Uh, and sometimes against Tier Limit. 4 Link 2s. The Link 3s we play are 1 Curious, 1 Selene. And the Link 4s is 1 Topologic, 1 Axis Code. Three fusions. I do not play Dracos to Paleo. The tier limits are not here for interruptions. The tier limits are here for the link climb turbo to end on your automatic negate to totally awesome. One gigantic sprite one totally awesome. Your typical end board is going to be some combination of Toad, Elf, Mascarena, Dweller, Snow, and Grave. This is your typical board. Let me just set this up for you guys. Some combination of this with Snow and Grave. Some combination. Sometimes you can't Mascarena, you Toad Dweller instead. Sometimes this is Top Logic Bomber instead of the Elf. It, it differs many times. But you have so many different forms of interruptions that we don't really need a Griffin. As far as Dark Ruler is concerned, you Dweller draw phase of Snow in the Grave. For game one, that's totally fine. It's totally fine. If they, you get Dark Ruler, right? And you know you don't have a Dark Ruler answer other than Snow Dweller. You can have multiple cards in hand with totally awesome adding back a follow-up as well. You're fine. You're not dying. They're dying. Uh, Dweller drop as well is just enough. And then lastly, the card that brings this whole deck together that makes Mothman and Chupacabra broken is Dugaris. Dugaris triggers every single tier limit in your hand. Not only that, but it has OKK capabilities by making your gigantic sprite 6400, by making your bomber 6000, by doing whatever God's Green Earth you want to OTK. On top of that, you can special summon from your graveyard. In scenarios where you want to special something specific, it does come up to be able to special summon something. Well, let's say you really need to level 2 badly and you have no access to Spite Elf, especially your Soft Frog. It's just generic scenarios where this card comes up a lot, but the discard effect is the most important. And not drawing on the opponent's turn, next turn, doesn't matter, because your opponent will scoop regardless, because you're going to have a thousand negates, so it just doesn't matter. And you're still going to enter the battle phase and kill them and have unstoppable control. That's the deck. That deck's absolutely amazing. Uh, my side deck was remarkable. I don't want to reveal what I'm going to play with my side deck because the side deck will be my YCS Niagara side deck as well. I have yet to determine if I'm going to put... Oh, 
Gaming shirt, true gaming. The shirts, you're gonna wear this when I don't enter YCS Niagara. When I or when I enter YCS, we're out of shirts, but we have cacao. Yo, this smells like. uh it's brand new, dude. Yeah, like, no, I'm saying, like, smells like YCS, like, like, sorry, like Yu Gi Oh cards. Right. Like, in a good way. I love this smell. It's like, I'm like, Sam. Yo, I can take my shirt off in here, right? If you guys would like that, wouldn't you? Sign up for my OnlyFans to do that. Guys, I'm gonna win this Yu Gi Oh tournament. YCS Niagara is mine. I already won YCS Niagara. Even if I don't enter, I won. Because everyone knows that I wouldn't win. And you guys are all lucky. And Penbra's deck after this deck. And that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Smash the subscribe button to get the video. Peace!